Hi, I'm Brian Friel, the deputy clerk here at Grossville Township. Most of you know who I am. Um, just gonna quickly go through some, uh, some of the main points of training for this uh, upcoming August 4th election. Um, some of the things I'll talk about um, will probably be geared more towards chairs. Some things will be geared towards, uh, you know, everyone, precinct inspectors and chairs. Um, some will be more towards, you know, someone using the APB, electronic poll book. But anyway, so election day is almost about a week away. Um, August 4th, Tuesday, um, all uh, election inspectors uh, are to meet at their precincts at 6 a.m. Um, you will find uh, your uh, where you're working, the precincts you're working in, attached to this email. Um, and that, uh, so you'll know where you're gonna be at on election day. If you have any questions, obviously you can call myself in the clerk's office, 734-676-4422, um, extension 241, or you can shoot me back an email. Um, so I'll, and I'll get back to you on any questions you have. So basically, um, the chairs will report to Township Hall at 5.30 on Tuesday to pick up um, the ballots, um, the, um, the VAT, uh, the electronic poll book, They'll sign out all that stuff, take it with them, meet you guys at the precincts at 6 a.m. So you guys have an hour to get set up, make a coffee, because I know that's that's gonna be a big big part of the morning for most of us. Um, and um, what will happen is uh, I'll give an, the oath to the chairs and co-chairs when they come pick up the equipment in the morning. And then when they get to the precincts, they will then give you your oath um, and swear you in for the day. Um, and I just wanna make sure we, we all know what that looks like. So if I share my screen here for a second, um, bear with me because um, this whole video meetings is a, a little bit new to all of us. So um, if I can find, there we go. So here is the oath on the first page. So in the morning, I will swear in your chairperson, and then um, they'll make sure that they're gonna check mark everything here and make sure they do all uh, these things here, and then they will um, swear you in. They'll sign that they swore you in, and each of you will sign that you were sworn in. Make sure you sign the poll book in the morning, okay? It's very, very key. Everyone's signature who worked in the polls needs to be in the poll book in the morning, or or for, um, we have one inspector who's gonna show up um, after the polls start. When that person gets there, they have to be sworn in and signed into the poll book. Um, and then you'd put in the remarks, you know, that, that that person showed up at this, at whatever time it was, and then, uh, and that you swore them in. So, um, everyone signs in the morning. You'll make sure, um, you know, the day before when the chairs, co-chairs and whoever um, they select to go over and uh, set up the precinct. Um, make sure you got a flag. Um, make sure you have make sure you have all the supplies you need. Number one, if you don't have something, call us and we'll get it for you. Um, you, know, you should have a flag um, present, um, sample ballots. Um, you'll have your big cardboard um, display for your uh, whatever voters should know poster. Your uh, proposal language will be on there. Uh, precinct map will be on there. Um, you'll have all your vote here signs you're, you put up. Um, you'll have your uh, voting booths to set up. Uh, you know, some, some people may do that in the morning. Some may do it the night before. Um, i trying to think what else you would have. Um, you just, just roll your tabulator to wherever you're gonna set it up for the day. Um, and make sure you got enough tables, chairs, and everything um, there. You'll have your applications to vote. Make sure you got enough of those. Anything you need, make sure you let us know. We've got enough extension cords, um, uh, power strips, okay? Um, so you wanna make sure you check all those supplies, all right? Um, so in the morning, once you get there at 6 a.m., um, you gotta make sure you prepare the electronic poll book. Uh, the tabulator and the VAT for operation in the morning. And the VAT is simple as, you know, getting it turned on and plugged in 
um, and running one test ballot through that vat. Okay, that test ballot's going to end up going into the envelope at the end of the night to come back to the clerk's office. But th that one ballot needs to go through it. Okay, and we'll have that test ballot in an envelope for you ready to go in the morning. Um, the tabulator, I'm going to do a separate video on um, setting up your tabulator. Um, I'm also going to do one other video on your shutdown at the end of the night, um, you know, going through the, the, the tabulator process and then also sealing up your cans, what goes in your can. Okay, but that'll be on a separate video later in the week. I wanted to get this one out first. Um, so make sure EPOL book tabulator VAT. Um, make sure you've got um, enough voting booths up. Obviously, we want to try to do our best to keep six feet in between our voting booths. So you're not going to be able to put up as many as you normally would, um, but try to get as many up as you can into your rooms. Um, make sure you have at least one sit down, one or two. Um, use one table maybe just to get a couple out so people can sit and vote. Um, make sure you have a public area. And I will just bring up a, a quick picture of the polling. Um, polling place here and zoom in. So you can see you got your voting booths, however you, you know, you need to set them up in your voting stations. But then you need one public area, usually towards the front of the room um, where some people from the public can come and observe. And obviously in the world of COVID right now, I'm not sure how many people are just gonna wanna hang out at a precinct, but you never know. You still need to have a designated area, two, maybe three chairs. This is not, uh, you're not gonna have very, it doesn't happen very often, so we don't need a lot of chairs. Um, and make sure that wherever you put your tabulator, you can see on here, there's gotta be a 10 foot uh, restricted area around that tabulator that no one can enter besides the person who's voting. Um, the only time we would enter that bubble is if the voter's having an issue and has asked the inspector to come into it, okay? Or the machine is beeping because there's an issue. Um, make sure in the morning when you set up this tabulator, it's gonna shoot out one zero tape, all right? Everyone in the precinct needs to make sure that the, well, two inspectors of different parties need to make sure that that tape is accurate. There are no votes already in the machine on the tape. And once you've done that, every single inspector in the precinct needs to sign that zero tape, okay? That zero tape stays connected to the tabulator. You just roll it back up, click it back underneath and you hide it away for the day, okay, in the little compartment. But don't rip it off the machine, keep it connected. Um, polls open at 7 a.m. Someone in the precinct needs to be the, um, uh, needs to yell out, you know, the polls are open at 7 a.m. Around 9, 9.30, this is the really important stuff, we'll deliver your donuts. Um, you'll have coffee and bottled water given to you in the morning. Um, so you'll have that all day. Um, if you run out of either of them or running low on either of them, let us know. We will bring more to you. Um, you'll have pizza delivered in the evening around 5 or 6 p.m. Um, bring your own lunch. It's the only thing we don't provide is lunch. Um, if you need to leave the precinct because you have a dog at home and you need to let your dog out, um, we don't have a problem with you leaving for 30 minutes. That's, that's about the limit, though. Um, if you need to run out for 30 minutes, lay your dog out, make sure you sign up your chairperson. You go to your chairperson, they will have you sign out of the poll book, and they will have you sign back into the poll book when you come back. And that's in case something does happen to you and you don't make it back to the precinct, that we have accounted for the fact that you did leave, okay? Um, if not, Wayne County, it doesn't go over well when, when we have issues where someone has left and they, they, and they are not in the poll book. Okay, at the end of the night, everyone who is there at the end of the night needs to sign that poll book. And if you've left and you never signed out, then we're going to have a problem at the end of the night. Okay. Um, you can see I have the polling place layout. And, and um, this is from the state. So ours is slightly different. Um, we have, you can see they have a station one, a station two, and then a station three. Well, we have a one, a two, three, and then the last station would be four for us, okay, we add one extra station in here um, if, for our purposes. Um, everything you know, pretty much still is the same, but we would like you chair people to do set up a, a help desk somewhere where um, we can refer 
know, the last table or, or any inspector could refer a voter to to ask questions um, to fill out, you know, those change of address forms or spoil a ballot, which is probably going to be a big thing is spoiling ballots in this election. Um, resolve any issues with status flags that could come up in the EPB. Um, those types of things. Um, so your station one is your check-in station, and, and I'll, I'll, I'll uh, zoom into that real quick here. So station one, this is where they're going to complete their application to vote. Um, then they're going to you're going to give them a pen to fill out their application to vote, and that pen is their pen now to keep. So they will keep that pen throughout the entire process. They'll vote with it. They can take it home with them. All right, it's their pen. Um, they we've bought black pens for the voters and we bought blue pens for all our inspectors so the black pens um you, so you that way you know if there's a black pen laying around it was a voter pen it wasn't an inspector pen so that that means it's going to need to be disinfected okay um so um you'll verify the precinct the polling location um you're gonna you'll, you'll verify the application to vote which i will um, bring up here real quick here's your application to vote and you'll make sure that they um, have printed their name, their date of birth, their residence address, um, and they've signed it. Okay. And then once you verified that, you know, the date of the election and the precinct will already be, you'll put those on in the morning. You'll fill out, you know, numerous applications of vote to get ahead of yourself in the morning. And then um, once you verify this bottom section in red, you'll put um, your initials there. And then that person would then move on to the next, um, the next uh, station. Okay, and, and you're pretty much you're the person in charge of traffic control. You're going to make sure the line is working. You know the line is um, looking good. We got to try to keep six feet in between our voters, unless obviously they, they live in the same house. Um, you'll offer any voting instructions uh, as need be um, uh, there at station one. Um, so then we'll move on to station two. Um, on ours, that's our basically our EPB, our electronic poll book station. Um, and that's where um, we will locate the voter in the electronic poll book and um, enter them in. So uh, for 99% of those voters, you know, you know they're gonna slide, you're gonna slide the uh, driver's license. It's gonna lock the voter in and bring them up on the screen. You'll issue them their ballot, okay? Um, for the 1% that don't have a driver's license with them, they have to manually type their name in to find them in the poll book. Okay, and just remember, with the poll book, um, if it's somebody who's not in your precinct, they're not going to show up. You'll have to look for them in other precinct, and then if you do do that, you'll have to then click back to your precinct. Just a just a reminder, um, and you'll issue the ballot. Um, you'll record the the number, initial the application to vote um, for you. Uh, you'll put the ballot number, uh, you'll put the voter number on and you're going to initial next to the voter number. Um, you'll also, you will be putting the ballot number on there also, but the ballot station will initial next to the ballot number. Um, so you'll put the voter number in um, and basically, you know, station two and three for our purposes are, we, we make them two different stations, but you two are absolutely connected all day long. Um, station two can't run without station three. Station two has to issue the ballot, and station three is the person who actually has the ballots. You two have to be talking and connected all day to make sure you're giving out the right, the, the, next, the next number on, for the ballot is correct, and we don't get um, out of whack with our, um, with our ballot numbers, okay? So talking all day, making sure, okay, what's our next ballot number? Okay, that's what I've got, so, all right. Um, so the next station for us, station three, would be where we hand out the ballot. Okay, um, that person um, will have the ballot in a secrecy sleeve already. The ballot stub um, sticking out at the top. Um, you'll give it the ballot instructions, and for this election, um, ballot instructions are are pretty important. If I can find that on here, here we go. So, um, don't split your vote. All right. So this is this is your biggest ballot instruction in the world here. Okay, voters cannot vote both parties in the primary election. So if they start on the front side of the ballot on the Democratic, when they flip the ballot over, they have to stay Democratic on the second side also. 
Same thing if they were vote Republican, when they flip it over, they have to stay Republican. You cannot vote between the two parties. It will invalidate the ballot for the uh, partisan section. Um, their, their votes for judges and the proposals would still count, but the partisan section of that ballot would no longer count, okay? It would be invalid. So um, this is a, a major, major um, direction we have to give the voters. We've had, I don't even know how many, I can't count how many spoiled ballots we have in the um, absentees because of this right here, all right? You have to vote a single party column in Michigan primaries, okay? Um, and then once you give out that ballot, go back to where it was here. Um, oh, I'm sorry. There we go. You'll initial next to the ballot number is where you're going to initial, okay? Um, and just remind them that they can't have their phone out um, until they're in the voting booth and they can have their phone out in the voting booth, but nobody in the precinct can. They can't be walking through line talking on their phone, texting, okay, taking no pictures in the polling place, okay. If only people like to take pictures are news media that have credentials from the clerk's office. They would have something that would, we'd give them something to show if they showed up. And all they can do is take a picture from the public area of the precinct in general, okay. They can't come up and take a picture of the tabulator or, or um, walk up and take a picture of a person voting only a general picture of the room, okay? Um, so, let's put this down for a second. Um, so voters can take a ballot selfie. So once they're in the voting um, station, they can take a picture of their ballot, okay? They can't, there's no pictures of them. Hey, yay, that doesn't, no, that, none of that. They can take a picture of their ballot in the voting station. Okay, um, so once, um, zoom out a little bit here. Once we get past uh, station three, which like I said, isn't on here, but it's here. Um, they, the voter would then be directed to go vote. They would vote their ballot and then they would head over here what, to what we would call station four, okay? Which is the t basically the tabulator station, okay? So this person is gonna verify that the ballot number is correct, the ballot number on the stub matches the ballot number that's on their application to vote, and they will remove that stub, okay, and they'll retain that, um, and a, they'll stack those in a pile, and then they will put the application itself onto a spindle, and then they'll direct the voter over to go over to the tabulator and um, put their ballot into the tabulator. And of course, um, they would be the person who's helping with any issues with the tabulator that arise from the voter being there. Um, you know, and like I said, we're gonna have spoiled ballots. So uh, the more instructions you give at station three, the easier it's gonna be at station four, but we know we're still gonna have spoiled ballots no matter what. So um, the person at station four is really that facilitator to start the um, spoiled ballot procedure, which is to then, um, get uh, that person back to the chairperson who will then get them back to station two to, to fix that, the, the spoiled ballot and get them a new ballot. Um, so that is basically your polling place. Um, there is a help desk that's more for the chair people, like I said, um, then you have your VAT somewhere located um, in the room um, for your uh, voter assist terminal um, for those who need assistance um, marking their ballot. Um, so, the next thing I want to go over, um, let's see. Obviously, there's going to be some things that happen at the tabulator, um, the reasons that your tabulator may um, uh, beep, all right, or have an issue. Uh, somebody tries to put a blank ballot in there. That would be one reason. Um, if someone overvotes their ballot by voting for too many candidates, um, if somebody puts a ambiguous mark somewhere on there that it picks up. Um, or of course, if someone uh, overvotes and votes, or not overvotes, but um, splits their uh, vote, votes in both parties. Uh, those are some of the main things that you're gonna see that happen in this um, election. Uh, electronic poll book, okay, electronic poll book. Um, 
make sure you pay attention to status flags. And, and I, I brought this up right here. So you've got your voters with status flags and, and, and most of them are, are pretty simple, um, but and it, it'll be at the bottom of your screen on your, your uh, EPB. It, you know, it'll say in red, absent, let's say this person, absentee ballot was sent by the clerk, voter must surrender ballot or submit affidavit, okay? So that's one of your main ones. Um, and um, obviously somebody can come to the polls who um, was issued an absentee ballot. They may, maybe they didn't get it. Uh, maybe they destroyed it. Maybe it came destroyed. Uh, maybe they have it with them and they haven't voted it, okay? If they have a ballot with them and they have not voted it, they can turn that in um, and have it spoiled by your chairperson who would call down to Township Hall, make sure that um, we spoil that ballot out and then you can issue them a ballot and they can vote. If they've already voted their ballot, then they have to bring it to us at Township Hall and turn it in. That's the only way they get to vote is with that, by turning in their actual um, absentee ballot if they've already voted it. Um, but that's a big one. You don't want to make sure you want to make sure that we don't, if someone has a status flag, that we've already received their ballot. We don't want to issue them another ballot. Okay. That's a no, 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 no people voting twice. Um, that would be a disaster. All right. And, and, and the computer will ask you, I think two times, do you really want to do this? All right. It, it really tries to make sure you don't give somebody a ballot who already has been given a ballot. Voter status is challenged, okay? And you can see here, there, there's a few reasons, age, citizenship, residency. Um, I would say we, there's a few in our, um, there's a few on our roles that have the citizenship. Um, there's probably even more that have residency. We don't have a lot of challenged voters within our system, but there are some. Um, and this voter has been challenged um, process uh, before being issued a challenge ballot, seek assistance from the precinct chairperson to complete this process. Um, same as regular voter accept challenge ballots. So um, you're going to select challenge ballot um, when you give it to them. Your chairperson is going to have to go through the challenge uh, procedure, um, which is putting um, the ballot number on the back of the ballot, covering it with a sticky note. Okay, so that um, if we find this person should not have voted, we can go back after the election, pull that person's ballot, take those votes off of the official voting roll, okay, and, uh, and correct if, if we find out the person should not have voted, okay. Uh, must show ID before voting, federal requirement. Um, that just means somebody, when they registered to vote, did never um, had their ID checked, okay? There's, there's definitely some of these in our system. Um, no big deal, basically, if you're gonna check their ID, they can move on and vote, okay? Um, let's see, voter uh, confirm address or surrendered license. We definitely have a bunch of these in our system. Um, so basically all this person has to do is confirm verbally that they live at the address that is in the EPB. And if they do that, then they're good to go. They can vote, okay? Um, confirm citizenship. Um, as you can see here, they must, com uh, must complete a voter registration application, mark yes on the citizenship box, and then um, they're okay to vote. If they were to check no, obviously not being a citizen, they could not vote. Uh, voter status, uh, signed registration card. All right, this is another easy one. Anyone who has signed registration on there, they would just need to sign the registration um, and they'd have to print their name uh, in the printed section just so we know whose signature that is. That gets re uh, returned to us um, in the uh, envelope at the end of the night. And I'll come back to the local clerk for us to, to take them off that status and get their signature on their MasterCard file. Um, and then we obviously have your most vote in person. You know, that was obviously first time voter, all right, um, needs to vote in person. Okay, nothing, nothing special there. Um, okay, so what do we got next? Missing registration flow chart. Okay, so here it's a pretty simple procedure. Okay, um, and this is somebody who um, 
comes in and they aren't listed in your poll book. Okay, so it's like now we gotta figure out why are they not in your poll book. Um, the biggest reason would probably be that they registered um, after four o'clock on Monday or same day registration on election day with the clerk's office, um, which means they would have a receipt from the clerk's office with them. And I know I, here it is. Um, let's do this. So here is that receipt. Okay, um, and you can see that they would show up with this piece of paper um, and what you would do is you would cut off this application to vote and um, this would be the application to vote that you take through and they put on the spindle instead of the one you have at your precinct, because right? this would already be filled out. Um, this would already be filled out with the date, um, a barcode from our office, okay? This would be all ready to go, so, um, but anyway, Obviously, we have same day registration um, and we have anyone can register to vote in person 14 days before election day. But those that do register after four o'clock on Monday or on election day aren't going to be in your e poll book because at four o'clock when absentee voting ends on Monday the third, we then start um, putting your information on your flash drives. So at that point, anyone who comes in isn't gonna be on your flash drive, which means they're not gonna be in your system, okay? They would then have this receipt to show you to go through the process. Um, and obviously, as you look at the uh, new registration here, um, does the voter have a receipt issued in the last 14 days? And there's yes, no. And, and it's, it's very simple to go through, go through the process and find out um, what's going on and why we don't have this person in the system. Um, as far as, um, let's see, do I go have, uh, I thought I had, it. okay, so yeah, I mean, so one of the things, just I, I did kind of go miss this a little earlier, is people who have moved, and I, I know this comes up every election where someone's moved and they're, they're, they're there to vote and they're not showing up in your roles because they've moved, okay? Um, so if they've moved within the township, a voter who moves from one precinct to another precinct within the township, but fails to change their address prior to election day, can vote one last time in the precinct where they're registered, okay? So they get one last time. So now that voter will have to complete an election day change of address notice, which would be in your, um, your bin, okay, in one of the files. Um, and then if a voter has moved to a different city or township, a registered voter who moves from one Michigan city or township to another Michigan city or township can vote one last time in the precinct where they're registered if the move was made within 60 days of the election. So within 60 days of the election, if they've moved, they can vote one last time here on Gross Hill if they've moved off of Gross Hill. Um, they would then fill out a cancellation of authorization form. Okay, once again, in your bin, um, they would fill that out, which means after this election, we are canceling. Um, if the move, if they verbally tell you their move was more than 60 days before the election, that voter needs to go up here at their new local clerk's office, register to vote on same day registration, and vote in their new location, their new jurisdiction, okay? If it's more than 60, they need to go to that new place and vote, all right? Um, less than 60, they get to vote one last time. Okay, I'm sorry, that was one thing I, I missed earlier when I was going through here. So here's, yeah, yeah, registrations are pretty simple. Um, uh, flip chart, I'm not gonna go through the flip chart, but there's a flip chart in everybody's bin um, or binder, it's in one or the other literally goes over every single thing that can happen at the polls. Like this is everything. Um, I did email this to you last week or the week before, I don't remember. Um, so you have this, so you can go through it and it goes through everything. Layout, closing the polls, maintaining order at the polls. So it's gonna go over um, challenged voters, uh, challengers in the polls. And I haven't heard, I know that uh, the parties have asked to have challengers, I have not been um, contacted about challengers being 
here at our polls here on Grow Seal as of yet, okay? Um, but they would have identification with them, all right? You can read about that procedure in this flip chart if you wanna know more about that. Campaigning at the polls, exit pollsters, all right? We're gonna have a lot of campaigning at the polls, all right? This is a local election. Uh, it's very heated a local election so far. So um, you're gonna wanna make sure that we're, the campaigners are staying 100 feet from the front door. They're not chasing voters in the parking lot. If you know of any of this, call me so I can get dispatch over there to put an end to it. Um, they can't have uh, t-shirts on saying, you know, vote for whoever. They can't come in with shirts on and say, or buttons or stickers, any of that. They can't have, voters can't have anything in their hands that was, that was handed to them in the parking lot that says vote for people, all right? All these things um, can't happen. They can't have a car that has signs and bumper stickers all over it, okay? That's too close to the, the precinct, all right? Um, so just make sure that um, if, if they're coming in with t-shirt, then you direct them to the bathroom. They can flip their t-shirt inside out, then they can vote, okay? Um, or they gotta cut, find something to cover themselves up with. Well, we even give them tape if they have to, they can tape it on there, so, so cover themselves up, all right? Um, but this section covers all of that here. Um, you're also gonna have uh, exit pollsters. We usually don't have exit pollsters. They're usually not a huge issue. They can ask people questions on their way. They, they have to be 20 feet from the door and they can ask people how, you know, any questions about voting on their way out. You know, most likely it's someone trying to just try to get a poll, um, an unofficial poll basically on, you know, how people were voting in that precinct. I, I say unofficial just because not everyone's gonna answer them. So it's definitely not an official. Um, challengers, poll watchers, once again, you can read about that. Uh, we could have them, could not, we'll see. I would say November for sure. Not so sure we're gonna have them here in August. Um, assisting voters, another one. Um, I would say the biggest one on here um, that is gonna affect us is um, obviously if someone comes in and, and requests um, help filling out their ballot, um, one inspector from each party would then go and um, assist the voter with their ballot. Um, curbside voting, this is where, um, this would probably be a little bit new this time now. There's always been curbside voting. If a voter's unable to enter the polling um, location, they can ask the precinct board for assistance, which basically, as you can see here in this corner, um, two people, two inspectors, different political party would go out um, deliver the ballot to the person in the secrecy sleeve, voter would vote it. Um, and then the two inspectors would uh, bring that ballot back in and um, put it into the tabulator. It was marked by the voter out in their car. These two inspectors would then bring it back in and put it into the, into the machine. Um, I bring this up as if you have um, you could always offer this up to voters who refuse to wear a mask. And I'm gonna to get to the COVID part here. I guess I'll just get to it now. Um, obviously, we're gonna provide you with masks. Um, not just you, but also your, yeah, as many, for your voters, okay? Um, we'll probably give you about, you'll have about 300 masks given to you for the day. Um, We'll give you face shields. Up to you if you want to wear them or not, but everyone will be provided a face shield if they'd like to wear it. Gloves. Um, uh, hand sanitizer, wipes, okay? You're getting all these things for election day. We're gonna give you masks that you can give to voters if they don't have a mask. You can't make a voter wear a mask, all right? Um, if they refuse to wear a mask, if they say they won't wear a mask, they still get to vote. You can offer them curbside voting as that as an option if they don't want to wear a mask. So basically, you could say, you know what, you want to wear a mask, but would you would you want to curbside vote? 
So two, two of us would come out, we'd give you your ballot, you'd vote it, you put it back in the secrecy sleeve, we take that ballot in and we put it in the tabulator for you. That is, the state has said that is an option that we can offer during, the, during this time, okay, if you want to. Uh, I, I'm not gonna say you have to, but if you guys as a precinct are nervous about someone voting without a mask, I would, you might wanna offer it and then if they say no, then they're going to get to vote anyways, but um, at least you tried, okay? So, um, let's see here. So I went through this. I'll make sure I went through everything I've got here. Oh, here's the e-poll book. So this is your supplemental information. Um, so if, if someone comes to vote, who registered to vote with us on election day, they're not gonna be in your e-poll book. So you'd have to manually enter them. So this information's in the e-poll book um, red folder that's in your um, e-poll book uh, bag with the computer. Um, and this will give you exactly how to enter a new voter in using the unlisted tab, okay? Entering them in and then, um, they would be able to vote and then making sure once that you're you're done with that that you make sure you click back onto this precinct to get back to your precinct okay um so that's what that is and, uh, let's see tab are rejected spoiled uh, we I, i'm not going to go over everything that's in here you're going to have a lot of spoiled ballots so you, you need to be prepared for that um status flags already went over Voters who have moved, I went over. Um, let's see here, what's this? Process, we don't process absentee ballots in the precinct. Duplication, there's not a lot of times you're gonna have to duplicate a ballot, it's very possible, um, but that's in the flip chart if you need to duplicate one. Um, so if a ballot gets pushed um, into your write-in section area in your tabulator when you open it up at the end of the night. You know, you get that little flip down um, where your write-in ballots will be. Um, so if you flip that open, that would be probably where any of these would end up at. And if, you, if you're if you looking at a ballot, um, here's some things that to maybe look over. If somebody's maybe voted to, uh, maybe overvoted, but they wrote, you know, uh, mistake next to one of them or something where they clearly tried to tell you that they made a mistake then that ballot should be duplicated and corrected okay um let's see write in candidates uh this is a primary election so of course we have um our favorite precinct delegates on there and the one special thing about precinct delegates is on election day, they can write in to be a candidate. So um, you'll have the write-in forms with you. So if someone asks for that, you give them the write-in form, they fill it out. Um, at the bottom it says notarize it, which you as the chairperson on election day, you are a notary. Um, so you would sign off on that. So they would then get to um, go through and if they vote for themselves, obviously, um, then you now have a writing candidate. Um, so you will then, I would guess almost every single precinct is going to have write-in candidates, okay? Once this happens, okay, you're gonna contact the clerk's office and let us know. We need to make a list because the absentees need to know who is now a write-in because if they get any of one written in on theirs with a vote, it counts for that candidate. So. If you do get somebody who decides to write in as the precinct delegate, and it's, it's the only per, only position that anyone can write in for is the precinct delegate position on election day. Um, make sure you let us know, um, and then make sure you know at the end of the night, you're gonna have to look through your bin for write-in candidates because obviously, you know, here you go. Um, anyone who files as a write-in before election day, they have to fr the Friday before the election to, to write in. And I know already of at least four people who have done this. 
okay, we will give you a list in the front of your binder telling you who the writing candidates are, okay? Um, I know at least four people have contacted me. Um, I've notarized their information to send to Wayne County already. So you're going, there are writing candidates that are going to be on, on the ballot. Um, I would assume every single one, every precinct, maybe not, but I'm assuming. Um, so at the end of the night, you would fill out your write-in only in, in the poll book, um, candidate's name, and then you're going to do your, your tally marks, one, two, three, four, five's a slash, um, depending on how many, and then you total them up, okay? Um, so the, pretty simple. Um, I did in the previous email send you um, precinct delegate write-in information uh, video, okay? So make sure you reference that if, if you have any questions about that. Um, I think that's pretty much it with the, with the chart. Yes, okay. Um, so we get through that. Assisting voters I went over. Um, so at the end of the night, let me just pull this one up. All right, end of the night. So you've got close of polls at 8 p.m. Um, every voter standing in line at 8 p.m. gets to vote. So as soon as the 8 p.m. hits and you announce the polls are closed, take an application to vote, hand it to every person in line. That way you know if somebody new enters that line that you didn't see, if they don't have an application, that means they weren't in line at eight o'clock. Um, door, door to the polling place remains open at all times. It's never locked in case anyone wants to come in and watch the closing procedure. Um, any interested person who wants to see results, as soon as you've got results printed out and you're ready to, um, and you're not actively doing something with a tape, um, someone could come and look at the tape and look at the results. Um, make sure the number of ballots tabulated equals the number of voters according to your list of voters in your e-poll book. Let's see here. I've got, um, if there's a discrepancy, uh, make sure you put a remark um, in the poll book and you should have, I mean, most likely anything that happened um, with your numbers being off, you probably knew earlier in the day when it, when it happened or soon after it happened and you, you notice because throughout your day, your chairperson is going to check these numbers constantly. So um, I'm sure you're going to catch it a lot easier than the end of the night, well before the end of the night. Um, the ballot summary is completed and any discrepancies are recorded in the remarks section of the e poll book. Um, and then you have your um, certificate of election inspectors here at the end of the night. Um, this is where you're going to put uh, your number of ballots tabulated, uh, provisional ballots, number of voters according to your list of voters. Um, make sure we check mark everything and we go over everything on this certificate. Um, we're going to put our container. Uh, seal numbers. Um, we're going to have uh, inspection to different parties sign, and every um, inspector in the precinct is going to sign um, at the end, at the close of polls. They will sign the back of the poll book. Every inspector. If we don't have someone's signature, we're going to have to come find you, which means I'm going to send an officer to your house to bring you back to Township Hall to sign. Because if not, once it once it gets past the if it gets down to Wayne County and they find you haven't signed, they're gonna make you drive down to Wayne County and sign the poll book, okay? Um, and that same thing with all the tapes. Every tape that comes out of the tabulator has to be signed by every inspector in the precinct at the end of the night. So every tape, and then of course, this back of the poll book, every inspector must sign at the end of the night. Um, let's see here. All ballots get sealed and approved uh, container and seal number recorded on the ballot certificate. Um, this is all uh, pretty normal. Um, just make sure you're, you're putting your used ballots, your unused ballots, your spoiled ballots, your ballots for duplication, your ballot tabs all get sealed in a bag. Then that bag gets sealed in the container. Everything in the bag 
than in the container. Nothing loose in the container. Um, uh, let's see. I think I've covered everything. Um, you pretty much will be done around uh, earliest is probably nine. Um, hopefully for sure by 10 o'clock, you should be done and out of there. Um, obviously your chair, co-chair, um, where you should be coming back to Township Hall. Um, they'll come back to Township Hall um, with all the uh, ballots and they'll come to the receiving board and sit before them, um, go over, make sure everything is uh, sealed, gets sealed up properly and everything's uh, signed and, and we have everything, uh, everything together. So let me see here if I can share. Okay, so um, if you have any questions, uh, I went over a lot um, and I understand that for you, for you new people, um, you may have questions and be like, what did he just say? Um, you can give me a call, 734-676-4422, extension 241, or you can email me Brian F at grossiel.com, B R Y A N F at grossiel.com. Um, ask me any questions you have. Um, if you feel you need any individual training, you know, between today and election day, let me know. I'll basically be in this building every single day until election day. So if, if uh, we work on Saturday from 7 a.m. to 3 p.m., um, I'll probably be here even a little bit later than that, but obviously I'm available. Um, I will probably even be here on Sunday doing some type of work. So if you need to meet with me on Sunday, just let me know. We can set something up. Thank you guys. Have a good one.